Good evening, everybody, and welcome to an exciting Super Brothers 3 Randomizer Tournament match we got for you tonight. We got the bronze match of the main tournament here. We got the number four seed, Pro A007, taking on the number seven seed, Mitch Flower Power. I am Makoto 52, and joining me on comms tonight is Growlwolf. How you doing, man? I am incredible. I am so excited to see what happens here between these two runners. These guys have had a tumultuous journey, I think at best. You know, we've seen the guys that these both have taken on just to be at this point. And of course, both these guys were those set up to the Teats and the Haxer match tonight, or tomorrow night, I should say. Uh, that's also going to just be an incredibly good race between the two of them. So I am excited to be here for sure. And we are kicking these off right off the bat. And it starting right in the middle this time around at world four start the giant land so uh right off the bat here we got some sledge bros they're fighting uh only gonna get a star out of that though unfortunately but hey you never know it can come in handy yeah you know starman is one of those items that really kind of gets a bad rap uh in a case like this mitch flower power opted to go ahead and use the star early uh, and he wound up in a fire brothers with a water arena and that was just enough to help him out and keep him safe and, and keep him in it. So, you know, I love the play. I, I do, you know, Starman kind of gets a bad rap, but not always a bad thing. Right, you are. And start off, we got 6F3, the Carpet Fortress here. Um, interesting start in World 4. Um, so, yeah, there's Small Mario, unfortunately. Still, still got a little bit of stars to, to help him here. Um, yeah, it looks like, you know, for, for the Bronze stage, you know, it's, it's really nothing to them. They've very high quality players here. They they got nothing. It should be no problem for them. Yeah, absolutely. You know, this is one of those things that we're going to be looking for those really crazy matchups, those really crazy levels to come out. And we talk about 6-5 uh, to some degree, but like 6-6, six, 7-5, six, seven, 7-9, seven, some of those. Even the longer levels like 7-9 and 5-3, uh, those are levels that we're going to be looking for because, yeah, they can give you a little bit of a problem especially depending on the enemy set, because, hey, we've randomized that too. So if you get a really bad enemy set on one of those, that could really be a great equalizer in itself, just as the runners try to get through that without a lot of damage, if any. Yeah, so it looks like both runners have played both of the Hammer Bros. Uh, got a music box out of the other one. So Mitch has a slight edge right now, uh, mainly because Pro to that death on the Fire Bro encounter earlier. Yeah, we got Iggy Koopa here. They're both small Mario still. Nothing but, nothing but stars so far. <laughs> but yeah, Mitch gets it done. Gets the wand about 212, I want to say. The pro not too far behind here. Just hopes, just do not want to get hitboxed. Yeah, a hitbox here is just a, a death sentence, basically. You know, you never want to speculate how early the run is over. But at the same time, you also need to be just a little bit prepared for that. Uh, because a death early could set up a wave of effects later and even, especially in the mental game if you can't get your mental mindset about you your, acu your acumen about you you're in trouble and that is a terrible terrible place to be in the first game of a best of five very well said and we're going to world two now the desert world and right off the bat we got a, a vanilla stage in the world the pyramid here Mitch, desperate for a star, he's going to open up a block, gets a mushroom, finally. <laughs> and our long star, uh, rows of stars in each of the previous levels, so love to see it. Absolutely, you know, it's one of those like Murphy Laws kind of thing. It feels like it shouldn't happen, but every now and then we get a seed that only produces seeds or uh, stars. And you're, you, you kind of wonder like, wait, how, how random is it? And there you go. I mean, we finally got our first mushroom. Uh, into the level or world too, so go figure. Yeah, Pro making that same play, grabbing that mushroom. Um, I was wondering if he would, considering that can be a star sometimes. You, you really don't want to see that in the pyramid stage because <laughs> you run into that buzzy beetle and yeah, you'll have a bad time. Absolutely, so many enemies, so many issues. Got a question in chat about Atlantis being a beta level, needs to know more about it because it was never in the original game. Uh, and that's really it. It was a lost level. It was added into the memory. It was a auto scroll level and was the only level that actually featured the gold cheap cheap fish. So if we come up, obviously we'll make mention of it, but it is an entertaining level for us, the commentators and the viewers. But overall, it is really kind of a scary place to be if you are one of these runners. So of course we'll be checking out for that. That's a huge issue. 
and one of the two auto scrollers in the game, so we'll be looking for those for sure. Yep, and we got a hand stage now on Pro's side. Mitch just played it. Um, I missed why I'm, they collected though. Um, we'll see shortly here. It's like that P wings in the hand stages this time. Very nice. That's definitely a great item to have, especially for levels such as uh, six five that we may or may not see that they could actually fly over seven six. You know, there are some levels that that is very valuable on, so we'll be looking for that for sure. Yep, so both runners making the same decision here. You're going to take the pipe and go around the lock there. Um, Pro did not play the hammer bro they had access to. Um, I'm not sure Mitch, looks like Mitch did, so um, must not have been a hammer. So If that was a hammer though, they could have easily um, broken the rock and skipped, skipped a good portion of this world. Absolutely, I think Mitch may be looking for a tail here. And it, he has gotten it, so we'll have to go up and see what the hidden item is. That lock, obviously not a factor. It's not part of the critical route. And in fact, it's not even in the way. So a very good decision to go ahead and go for that hidden item. You get out of the world one fortress a lot quicker. Pro A, I think we'll probably do the exact same thing here in just a moment. Yeah, definitely a decision to make. That lock is, is uh, out of the way, so it doesn't really help at all. Um, either way, it's one level to the castle from there, so. There you go. Now we have six, seven, one. One of our all scrolling levels turned off. The all scrolling off. Um, so yeah, with two exceptions, all the all scrolling is disabled. Um, you have five, nine, the diagonal stro scrolling level in the sky, and in the Vedic level called Atlantis, which you mentioned earlier. I love the decision from Proway here to go ahead and keep that tail. Obviously, Mitch using a much more aggressive strategy, utilizing that fire flower. But on a level like this, where things can sometimes go awry, we. You know, like having that just that little bit of a, a sense of comfort there that you can take the tail and get through it a lot quicker and allow yourself with the glide. So, you know, not a terrible thing. And as they go into World 3 Airship, we'll see if that continues to help them. Mitch going for the uh, wall jump there in the World 3 Airship, but it doesn't get it, unfortunately. I'd like to see someone get in a race. That'd be, that'd be pretty, pretty cool. And we have a heavy Morton and... Looks like a two hitter unless you finish them off fireballs and quite catch that. Yeah, it seemed like he was kind of using a hybrid strategy, which tends to be a favorite from the runners. It's a real easy way to kind of go between the fire kill and the jump kill. That way, if one's quicker than the other, you, you kind of find it out still. So, not a bad decision on his part. Of course, Pro will have to go the old fashioned way. Uh, but we'll see here in just a moment how long that takes him. Oh yeah, it looks like it's the full five hitter. So wow, Mitch taking a lot of time to fire flower, but uh, but yeah, Pro not still not too far behind. Um, probably like what 10, 15 second difference between the two. Well, we got Mitch flower power into world five, so it's probably closer to about thirty five seconds at this point. But even then, you know, you're looking at maybe a level difference between the two runners at this point. Yep, and to start off, we have 6-2, another auto scrolling level turned off. Uh, just a couple blind jumps to worry about, but otherwise, uh, pretty straightforward level. Absolutely, and if you do have a tail, you can go over that wall. Uh, we'll see if Pro A decides to employ that strategy. Personally, it's one of my favorites, because you do save just a little bit of time as opposed to going down and around. But hopefully that does the system here and help get him closer to uh, Mitch Firepower. You know, there's a lot of time left to play still, but... At some point, you do got to make the move. Yep, and it looks like, according to the map, we're in for a bit of a long haul. Um, yeah, both forts, both forts right, right here on the ground. Um, more likely, the orange fort will will build this bridge on the ground half, and they have to get to the tower, which is which is in Spinella's spot this time around. So, at least on the ground half, it's pretty pretty uh, pretty long trek they got going on here. Oh my, and it just got even longer because that second fort is absolutely required. Uh, just like you said, I mean, that's, wow, this is going to be a long World 5. It's kind of one of those you love to see, uh, unless you're playing. Yeah, and how, how appropriate, 4 one 4 f two right next to each other. And <laughs> yeah, we've kind of noticed that it goes both ways ever since we started talking about it in our chats. You know, it's one of those things we kind of look for now and almost instinctively where World 4's and World 7's fortresses both go together most of the time. 
but also with the randomizer there are times where it doesn't so it's kind of an interesting feature but allegedly it does happen more often than they don't Yeah, so we got yeah, Mitch is just just hitting off one four right there. Pro in the uh, Fortress now, taking the bottom path, the um, arguably safer but slower path um, in this fortress. But yeah, no, no real downside there. You get a power up out of it. Absolutely. Hopefully that fire flower does help. Uh, Mitch flower power just blew that one away, and for Pro A to go bottom route does take a little bit more time. But now he's got a fire flower coming out of it. That should be a really quick fight on the the coin ship and the boomerang brother if he decides to go that way. Oh, look at this! We got Pro A pulling out the cloud. Very interesting. So that, that was a one four. So uh, not the best cloud usage, but um, just like that, the gap is closed up a bit here. I'm curious if that's going to be a huge factor or not. Obviously, if we get like a 7-5 or some of those, it's going to be a huge deal. And something that, yeah, probably would have been better used with the cloud. But, oh! Mitch, hit, Mitch hitting the Batui spike there, taking a death. That is gonna, that's going to get these runners more synced up here. Yeah, now uh, we actually have Pro A taking the lead here with that death in the tower by Mitch Flower Power. He's actually going to go back, take on the Boomerang Brother we just saw Pro A take on, and now he's going to be back in the tower with about that 15 seconds difference still. Yeah, and I do see that cloud in Mitch's inventory as well, so uh, he'll still have that in his back pocket um, when the time presents itself here. Oh, look at that. The, the two just falls off to, to the to, uh, off screen for Pro A. <laughs> Yeah, that's a terrible enemy set, especially one if you're not expecting it. And welcome to Randomizer, because you don't expect anything. You try to expect everything, and then you're still surprised. And for Pro A, you know, great. That's wonderful. This time, Mitch Flower Power is looking for it, and he safely threw as well. And there you go. This guy has his free pass to the castle, so Pro A be on his way. A first year in the World Seven Airship. He's got his pewing equipped. Uh, we'll see if he can keep it. Go for that off-screen wrong grab that saves about three or four seconds here. Yeah, that's one of those that's kind of high risk, high reward. If you're able to get it, it's not a terribly hard clip to get, and it does work with the screen wrapping. So, Pro Ray, obviously a veteran of this game. We expect him to get it, and hopefully he does. You know, that's one thing we definitely would hope to see, because if you don't nail it right, and oh. you at the top, you do waste a lot of time. Yeah, and unfortunately, he fell, fell a bit short there. Uh, followed the wand to the bottom of the screen, at least. So, uh, not a huge time loss at the end. But, yeah, <laughs> fortunately, did not get the off-screen grab there. We saw Mitch Flower Power kind of going for the exact same thing there. He didn't exactly get the sub-pixel clip, so he is going to take the slow route as well. Yep, so War Free in the books, uh... 12 minutes in, uh, probably about average seed so far. We have Wolf Free, the Water World next. So it was 7-7 seven, seven to start off. Um, Mitch is, uh, let's see, he is Super Mario. He might go for this clip here. What do you think? He's going for it. You know, it's one clip that I was not very much aware of until a points tournament he put on. And honestly, I've been waiting to see if one of the runners will get it in the randomizer. I can't say that I've seen it yet, but I'm still hoping for it one of these days. Yeah, I gave it three solid tries there. Just couldn't quite get it, so he's just going to play love like normal. Yeah, that's one of those short-term gain, long-term losses kind of things. Either you get it real quick, uh, exactly like 7-1, 7-6, even 7-9 to some degree. Sure, if you hit it, great. That's wonderful. You're, you're moving on. But then again, on the other side, if you don't, how much time do you waste before you finally say, hey, not worth, got to get going? Rightfully said, we got 5-7 next here with, uh, with that lack of in the second half. Uh, <laughs> get, getting hit on pro there, so losing his tail, but uh, should not be a huge issue. Mitch, meanwhile, taking some hits here. He's being, being a bit more careless in his play. He's got to be super careful here. Yeah, it gets it done. Very nice. Yeah, very nicely done for sure from the veteran speedrunner. Obviously, Mitch Flower Power, a very prominent and dominant player in the SMB3 randomizer, or 
sorry, SMB3 vanilla speedrunning community. So we kind of almost have a clash of titans. Pro A007, no stranger to the randomizer scene. A lot of us know him uh, for his SMB3 randomizer runs. And then Mitch Flowerpower on the other side, who's a vanilla runner. You know, very indicative of the matchup I think we're going to see tomorrow, which I'm personally very excited about. Yeah, so it looks like Mitch was uh, having some second thoughts there. Um, taking a look at the map and trying to figure out what the ideal play is here. So um, he actually uses Cloud and skipped the level Pro just play free dash two. And um, yeah, it's, it's looking like the Pro's going to check this, but yeah, we, we know the answer is behind the lock right there. There's, on, there's only one Fortress here in World Free. So uh, yeah, this is it's pretty much forced here. It's uh, one five stage followed by the uh, Fortress. Kind of an interesting play from Pro A to go ahead and check it out. Uh, you know, it's one of those things, knowledge is power, and you definitely don't want to be down even in the knowledge deficit. You know, it's one of those things that wins and loses games. I've seen it go both ways where one runner was first to World 8, didn't check all the pipes, the other person did, and went straight to Bowser, and that was the entire change of the game. So, you know, it's one of those things you never want to speculate, but then again, the randomizer also tends to play a lot of the exact same way for people. So... You know, you got to make a decision, and but here we are. Yeah, we saw the tunnel on Mitch's side in one five, very nicely done. Um, <laughs> I know, I know, several vanilla runners can do it consistently, but yeah, Mitch is definitely one known for that, and he'd love to see it. Meanwhile, we, we got seven four two here, very nasty one indeed. So, so in the middle section, yeah, there's two pipes facing each other, and um, unfortunately, randomized to the extra long. Uh, uh, fire spitting plants there, so uh, kind of difficult to get through taking a hit there. So they're getting it done. Yeah, these guys making this level look so easy. I was on the air with Human Mustard yesterday, and we kind of brought this up and we're talking about it. That is the single reason my first run ever in Randomizer took over two hours. Those can be very, very unforgiving, and these guys are just making it look easy. Yeah, so seems Mitch. Uh, Thanks to that cloud usage, just going to take a slight lead here over Pro A. So, um, yeah, just uh, just flipping it back around once again here as you get for the World Four airship this time. So Mitch will take a little bit more of an advantage going into World Five here, and Pro A at, with a Magic Queen. So he's going to get just a little bit more help out of that. And Mitch Flower Power looks like he's going for the one grab. We'll see if he got it. Got the off-screen wrong grab, very nice. Yeah, that's one of those things that looks great, it feels great, it works great. It's just a great opportunity for our runners uh, to kind of get a little bit of time back. It's one of those almost satisfaction more than anything. Yeah, you save three to four seconds, but it, it's also one of those things that makes you feel good and you're starting to feel better in the run. So, you know, it's, it's one worth going for in my opinion. And we see World 8 Fortress, uh, the one with all the doors, so... <laughs> thankfully, thankfully the doors are not randomized yet. Um, if, you're, if you're listening to Fred, uh, just ignore that. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, um, Mitch, just, Mitch knows from point A to point B, uh, most of our top runners do, so no, no problem here. Gets a one cycle too, very nicely done. That is a lot harder to do than a lot of times it looks. And it, that is one of those things, that especially if you have to damage boost, you just do your absolute best to get through it as quickly as possible. And Mitch Flower Power is still able to hit that cycle, which is amazing. Very well done. Yeah, so we have two forts at the start, uh, both of them opting to skip the very first one right there. Very interesting decision on both parts. Mitch getting a hammer from the hammer bro, very nice. And it looks like that pipe may prove to be a useful shortcut. We'll see shortly here. World 6 is definitely one of my favorite worlds, uh, specifically for that reason. The pipes really come out to play. It could be a huge help, or all four could be right next to each other, and you're just having to buckle in for a long World 6. We'll have to wait and see for sure how that works out for these guys, and if Pro A goes after that hammer brother, or if he goes around it. Yeah, so uh, Pro opted to play to their fortress before uh, 
exploring here. It gets finds a super tank stage, so not not a uh, not a big time sink. So, oh, but look at this! It's a free pass. You hate to see it. That divergence actually pays off for Mitch Flowerpower, and Pro A is going to be losing a lot of time because of that. That's like we just said. One of those things. Knowledge is power, and you have to know the map. Yeah, unfortunate for unfortunately, Pro that fortress was not required. Um, so Mitch, Mitch uh, extending his lead a little bit here. Uh, Bagley gets a hammer. Um, though at this point, are, are there any worlds with hammer usages left over? He played two, four, six, and three. So yeah. And with this being a bracket stage, hammers do not break locks. This is on the bracket side of the tournament. We don't allow our runners to do that. That's way too easy and way too quick sometimes. So that is going to be really just a wasted item at this point. And unfortunately, that does take up a section of your inventory. So if it does come out to play, obviously it's going to take a little while. And now Mitch Flower Power finding a three world, uh, three fortress world one. Oh wow, this this could definitely be interesting, if, especially this fort the star here does not build the bridge that we need. Absolutely, and depending on which lock this does break, it will determine how many more levels that Mitch will have to play. If it doesn't break the lock to the left and doesn't build a bridge, then yeah, he's going to be playing at least two more levels, maybe three, depending on how it works for him. Yeah, we see the level that Mitch clouded was the, um, well... Oh, okay, Pro is checking the pipes out first, so yeah, unfortunately losing losing more time on on that. So you don't blame him, though. It's, I mean, it's a one level skip if you do. Yeah, he had a tier every chance, I believe. Yeah, I hate to see it. Yeah, that's one of those things. I think maybe he's just playing a little too safe, and it's it's kind of unfortunate. You know, it's hard to say. And yeah, he did well. He didn't do well with it. Blah blah blah. But you know, it's one of those things that. A little bit of knowledge goes a long way, and if that was the one that linked him, then where's the other one going? So, I guess I see it both ways, but, you know, from us on the commentary standpoint, it's it's hard for us to watch because we know the answer, and you just, I mean, they gotta make the plays. Yeah, um, I, I guess if I was in pro issues, I probably would have uh, just hammered the lock anyways, or hammered the boulder anyways, since this was the last world that, uh, that it'd be useful in, so... You want to see Mitch getting the fanfare, the three stars in a row. <laughs> Not too usual to see that, but uh, hey, it can't hurt. I mean, he only had eight lives, so that extra five does put him at 13. You know, that that's going to be huge and... Not really, but you know, it is what it is. The fanfare, not necessarily something that you're watching for. It's one of those things in the vanilla game. You know exactly what you're looking for because you're comfortable in your route. You know exactly what the game's going to do. In this case, no, we don't have that answer. We don't know that. So, you know, Mitch Flowerpower, not aware of the situation. No big deal. It's about a five, six second time loss. So a couple of those one grabs will equal that out in the long term. Yeah, so, oh, unfortunately, Mitch plays the incorrect fortress, just breaks a lot right next to it. So, uh, yeah, Pro makes the right call here. He could save a bit of time uh, not having to do that fortress. Hopefully the 50-50 does go in his favor this time. That would be huge for sure. Yeah, we welcome Raiders from uh, T. Ozzel. Thank you for so much, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. We are in our third place matchup for the bracket stage. This randomizer tournament has go been going on for the last couple months. Now we're looking at the finals here, which is just exhilarating in my opinion. This is a best of five. It's a couple of guys that are very well known in their respective communities. And it, what an honor to be here. I mean, this has been a great race so far. And this is just one of potentially five races, at least three, possibly five. Uh, I'm excited. I cannot think of a better way I would want to spend my Thursday night tonight. For sure, and apparently we have one six in the uh, vanilla world six position. Is that right? Yep. <laughs> so semi Fred, I guess you can call it. Moment of truth, and Proa does go right, so he will save a bit of time here. And what a great place to save some time going into the great one of the great equalizers. We've got quite a few. We like to call those. Uh, different things on the on the randomizer side but you know great call for pro to do that 
and tighten up the gap just a little bit. Obviously, we've still got about a level and a half, two levels difference between the two, but anything that Pro A could possibly get back here is going to be very beneficial going into World 7 next, and then going into World 8, a couple of places where a lot of swing can happen. So we'll hope for some good things here for him for sure. Yeah, still, still by a uh, level plus a castle uh, difference here as far as uh, Mitch's Mitch versus Pro A on time wise, but uh, yeah, Pro A that P wing is gonna uh, complete one six a lot faster for sure. Um, I noticed Mitch found the uh, leaf inside of the uh, block that's normally one up, so that was nice of him to be able to do that flying flying past the uh, final section there. And we have World 7 here, right off the bat we were at, right at the final island with a fortress, so this could be this could be our ticket out of here, it could make for a quick World 7, we'll see shortly. Yeah, that is going to be way too easy if it is, but you know, 25 minutes in already, we're into World 7, if this is the correct fortress, we've already seen three, obviously the best we can do here is two fortresses in this World 7, but Ludwig von Kube is going to be right after, and then Big Boss Bowser coming up. Mitch getting the fire kill on Boom Boom, very nice. And survey says... It did not break the lock, so we're going to, have to do some more exploring here. So it looks like we have a closed loops of pipe, or closed a couple loops of pipe. So the two at the front also mapped to the two on the sides. And Mitch Flower Power now having to go through 2-4 to see if he can figure out what he wants to do next. Obviously, the next play here is to go through that pipe below. And looking like a pretty linear World 7 altogether. Yeah, so far kind of linear. I'm having to play this 4-tile, uh, which happens to be 2-4. So, um, only one pipe forward to uh, get to the rest of the World 7 years. So, we'll see where it takes them. And we find the upper middle island section. And there's the other fortress, so not too far of a, a divergence there. Now, and overall, we're going to play most likely two fortresses. I can't say I fault Pro A at all for playing uh, this first one here. You know, it's, it's there, it's easy to get to. You're here, you might as well play it. Now he's going to have to go back around and figure out what he wants to do with these two pipes now linked up, and he realizes this, he's gonna take, I think, probably the exact same route that Mitch Flower Power does. It's kind of the path of least resistance, and he'll hopefully be catching up here in just a minute as well. Yeah, both of them keeping a fire suit. Um, Mitch able to take down the other Boom Boom with it, so very nicely done. So, she better find his way back to the castle shortly here, play an extra level. Uh, Probably has music box skip that other Prana stage, and he'll be on his way shortly. Yeah, it seemed like we had a couple of music boxes in their inventories. I haven't seen a Hammer Brother yet, so I'm very curious to see how this is going to play out. Fire Flower Suit's a really good a second option if you don't have that Hammer Brother suit. I fully expect these guys to keep those Fire Flowers as long as they can at this point. Yeah, so we see that Mitch using a Cloud, a uh, very nice... Uh, you know, because in World 8, there's really hardly any uses for clouds. The only ones that are actually skippable are 8-1 and 8-2. And we can see everything else in the world, all, all the military stages, all the uh, hand stages. Yeah, that's kind of against you there, so... You always want to use a cloud before World 8 if you can. Yeah, absolutely. Just not a whole lot of places that it's very viable. We were talking about it earlier in the chat, and it was mentioned, like, you know, you want to make sure you use those clouds before World 8, because it's just not going to matter. You can't skip the sprites. You can't skip the hand level not reliably with the cloud. So, you know, you just kind of got to wonder. And we entered the Great Equalizer World 8. So, chat, uh, what's your predictions uh, real quick? So, on the final screen, there's uh, anywhere between zero and four bridges to Bowser. I guess I guess negative one also counts uh, for some people, but... Uh... Yeah, go and get your guesses in. How many bridges will we see to in this round, game one here? I think I'm going to go ahead and have to say world or uh, two bridges. I think two bridges would be an interesting place for our runners to be. Uh, makes it a little bit more linear, which I think would favor Mitch in this place. But we'll have to wait and see what happens. 
Yep, and, and apparently Mitch uh, having to swap out his uh, fire suit for the Tanuki suit. Uh, it looks like Pro may be able to save some time here if he goes to that first fortress as well. Um, already having the tail right off the bat, so we'll see here. Yeah, very good chance for him to save uh, upwards of even 20 seconds on the Fort Knox. Uh, and you're right, if he goes right after it, that would be a huge play for him. And I think it's a good play. You know, yeah, you've got three pipes at the beginning. Very good chance you're going to be right back there at some point when you're doing your recon. Might as well get it done just to get it out of the way. And he has. So this is going to be very quick for him. Absolutely. Still relatively close. Uh, of course, Great Equalizer can strike here, depending on what these runners decide to do. Um, we, we see a lock on the screen. I think we see a couple locks on the Dark Maze. Um, yeah, Mitch, uh, Mitch trying that far pipe. Going to try one of the early ones now and see where those happen to lead. Not too helpful there, just the yellow uh, section with a hand stage. A lot of this too is going to come down to who finally makes a bite to go ahead and play a level, to go ahead and you know, start figuring out what he needs to know. And at this point, just a lot of research on both sides. It looks like Mitch Flowerpower, the first to the Bowser's Castle, and has found out it is two bridges. So congratulations to anybody in chat that had world, or two bridges picked. That was my pick as well. So hey, we, we got one tonight. Yeah, then it looks like Pro got pulled in by a hand trap. I know it's a normal tank, okay. So he was testing that to see if it was a four or a normal stage. Gotcha. And 7-5 it was. So definitely not one that our runners are going to want to have to play at all. And now Pro A with a P-Wing is playing 6-F-2, whereas Mitch Flowerpower is playing the only fortress in World 2. Uh, this is a little bit of a divergence. We talked about the Great Equalizer, folks. Here it is. Yeah, so um, so yeah, this force is required to um, open up one of those bridges. Uh, we should see shortly, because I think the other two locks are on the uh, Dark Maze. So, okay, but the R2 fort's on the hand bridge, so, um, so yeah, it's anyone's guess at this point. Uh, which forts do what here? Absolutely, and it looks like Pro A did find out the answer that he was maybe not looking for necessarily, and that is a lock. So unfortunately, I think this is going in Mitch Flowerpower's favor as well, as Pro A now has to get over to the hand stage and play those. So we know that the two Mitch Flowerpower is playing are going to be the two fortresses for the bridges. Yep, the only two forts remaining, so yep. Uh, looks like Mitch uh, is in the driver's seat at this point, so we'll see if he can... Uh, Bring it on home shortly here. Absolutely. And just a lot of things going really well in Mitch's favor this time. Fire Flower Suit is equipped. It is time to take on Bowser. Of course, that is 35 uh, fireballs for the big turtle. And we will be moving on to game two shortly. Oh, he loses the fire suit, though. You hate to see it, man. <laughs> Yeah, no kidding. That is going to definitely spell for a longer fight with Bowser. Fortunately for him, he does not have any competition at this point. He just doesn't have to lose. Uh, otherwise, you know, he, he's got this in the bag. But he is small oh. now, so we're going to have to be careful in this next section. Yeah, just just uh, playing kind of carelessly at this point. Uh, he's going to go full bottom to see if that happened to be a, a, a flower he could use. But but yeah, um, he should still it should still be his race to lose at this point. Um, Pro is still having one more fort to play before getting to the castle. Um, so yeah, Mitch is still have this, uh, unless Bowser gives, gives him a bit of trouble here, we'll see. Yeah, no big deal, that little hitbox does not affect Mario here in the Bowser fight, so he will be able to get through that with just staying still. Uh, very nice play to go ahead and get underneath Bowser in this. It's sometimes a little bit harder with that raised brick set that we have in the bottom route. But nonetheless, Mitch Flowerpower finishing this one up. We'll get an official time as soon as he does finish. And Pro A just behind him. I mean, all in all, a very tight race so far. And I fully expect this to go down to the wire. And with one last stomp, there, there, there has it. So get your GG's in for Mitch Flowerpower. He's going to take game one in this best of five affair. With an official race time of 33 minutes and 38 seconds. 
very good run for sure on the side of Mitch Flower Power. Just an exceptional job. Uh, we had a bit of a nasty seed in some places, but he was still able to keep the wits about him and finish off the entire world uh, very quickly, very succinctly. And a lot of the 50-50s went in his favor. So even just with that information alone, I mean, we had Pro A with a, a tail going into Fort Knox. Yeah. A nasty fireball set there for him, for sure. Yeah, how about that barrage of fireballs? Uh, pretty much impossible to get past that by taking a hit there. Wow. Yeah, disgusting one for sure. But nonetheless, just part of the randomizer. It gives and it takes away. Yeah, probably also means small Mario going to uh, going to show off that, that yes, uh, Bowser does in fact not have a hitbox in his lower half. Um, so yeah, you just sit right under him and just chill until he breaks through the floor. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Get you out for Pro A 007. He's gonna be down a game, but not definitely not out by no means. His official race time is going to be 35 minutes and 5 seconds. GG's to both of our runners for sure. What an incredible start to a fantastic race. You know, we've got the brackets that we're going through. Really, a lot of what that means is it's a randomizer. We've randomized the Koopalings as far as how many hits they take, who has Earthquake, at least two of them will, or I guess at most two of them will, uh, because one could be Lemmy who doesn't really show it. But either way, you know, just a fantastic job so far. I can't wait for game two. Absolutely. So don't not go away, ladies and gentlemen. We will be right back with game two of this best of five affair between Pro A007 and Mitch Flower Power. Do not go away. Welcome back, race fans. We are going into race two of a potential five where we saw Mitch Flower Power handedly win a match between the two of them to get started here. And what a great one to get started with. I mean, 33 minutes, 35 minutes, respectively. Uh, that is absolutely incredible. The difference between the two runners was less than a minute and a half. Uh, that basically was just Bowser's Castle. I can't wait to see what happens next. Absolutely. So yeah, go get your guests in real quick, chat. Well, where will we see start off from game two here? I think I got to see a seventh start here. Maybe start the reverse world order. I'm going to say world two. 
Oh, we got the Fred Roy one start. How about that? And look at this. It, it rain, and it's one for it. <laughs> Chat, y'all know what to do. Yeah, French Vanilla, Fred Seed, whichever you'd like to call. Uh, both runners just absolutely synced up at this point. Both grabbing that Fire Flower, both looking for the tail. That way they don't have to play the long way around on this one. But Fire Flowers for both, that means it's going to be a quick fight on Boom Boom and time to go. Yeah, I mean, one Fort World 1, it, the lock in the same spot as in Vanilla, this is uh, kind of interesting here. <laughs> What's next, 1-1? One, one? Hey, what a star that'd be. Ah, uh, not quite. 6-8, but... <laughs> Interesting, uh, the, the, the giant Koopaling just uh, decided to clip the, uh, gr the ground there on Mitch's side. <laughs> Don't see that every day. No, absolutely, and that star proving to be hugely helpful for Pro A as he's able to keep his Fire Flower, as Mitch Flower Power has lost that now, and is going to have to try to find another one here at some point, but Pro A the first through. Now on to the one six play, uh, placement. We'll see what it is. Yeah, very very good star usage there. Mitch is going to uh, get get his hair, hair brother fight done early here. Um, has to wait a cycle for the hair brother to get out of that block, but <laughs> gets a star of actually. So uh, let's see what he does. He's just gonna go in right away here. Gonna try this clip again. See if he get see if he can get it done. Ooh, that was super close. Yeah, it looked like he actually grabbed that sub pixel. That is incredible. Uh, three tries and we're done. And now Mitch Flower Power on to the rest of the fight with the Patuis. Thankfully, stars do pre prevent him from taking any damage here. But he'll be getting through here in just one moment. Now Pro A into that fight with the Hammer Brother. His is going to go a lot quicker with that Fire Brother suit. Yeah, so the, so the uh, power, power advantage showing itself for Pro A. Um, he's already in the airship, and this is a World 4 airship to start off. Gonna make it to his P speed strats in the D auto scroll airship here. Turn it normally two minute uh, auto scroll level into what, like 10 seconds or at most, probably. Yeah, we've got just about a 14 second difference, and it looks like both runners will be utilizing that strat. Pro A having a bit of an issue with Larry here, hopefully, no further troubles as that would be a leadership change for sure. Yeah, it looks like the full five hits for, for Larry. Um, thankfully, uh, he doesn't quite hit Boxy like Iggy does, but yeah, Crow's gonna be out of here. And uh, so what do y'all think, Chad? What's next? Will we see another World 2? Mitch Flower Power just made really short work of that Larry with that Fire Flower Brother suit. So a huge advantage for him going into that and coming back out. And now they're just at a 10 second difference. These guys are close. Yeah, make it much quicker with Larry there for sure. Um, I know we are not Wario King. <laughs> hey, but, how about that? A World 2 to follow. <laughs> could, could it really be Vanilla World Order? We'll have to not mention it and hopefully see if something does come out of it. Probably with the first look, he does have two fortresses here. Decides to play the one on the right. Okay, so he said, you know what? My 50-50 didn't work out last time. Let's shake it, shake it up a little bit. And Probably's doing the same thing. Both runners into 3-2. Yeah, so same same decision here. So Proga maintaining his lead here. Um, Pro falling the moat, though. Going to lose a bit of time there. So yeah, we... Just like that, we got a lead change just from better execution for E2 here. Well, it definitely did not help that Pro A just took a cheap, cheap to the face that he should have damaged. But hitboxes, what are those? Yeah, I hear their only suggestion. Yeah, you know, sometimes we forget that this game is over 30 years old uh, coming from. Uh, coming from Japan to the United States, obviously in '88 it did come over from Japan. Uh, started in Japan, I should say, anyway. And you know, we we just pushed this game to the absolute limit. You guys do such an incredible job of giving us everything that we have to offer in a game, and how exciting! You know, there's always something great coming out of it, and you know, sometimes that is a memory issue. That is something that does happen from uh, from a game that came from 30 years ago. Oh, probably not getting the one cycle. Me all Mitch is able to get it done. And uh, yeah, it's 484. A bit quicker here. 
I almost wonder if Pro A was maybe going for the door skip. Uh, if you do enter the right side of that door, it does allow you to clip through that wall and maybe just missed it. I wonder if he thought that he couldn't get the cycle, so he was going for a, a swag clip. He didn't get it either, so it made the best of an opportunity and got a fire flower out of that. Yeah, and look at this. They lock, it, uh, this 8-4 does not break that lock in front of the castle, so they're going to have to uh, traverse back here to the other fortress. And it looks like it, we do have the Air Force this time. You know, that's one of those things you you want to kick yourself for making a decision like that. But Pro A, not in a ter terrible place at all. You know, if both play players make the exact same decision, you're fine. Otherwise, you know, you are really hunting down and looking for any time save that you could possibly make. And I'm being corrected. Apparently, Mitch, I got the one cycle. So, um, yeah, still, still uh, having that advantage from the just faster execution so far. We have any Cloudlands inventory, so um, that might have been from the Princess, I'm guessing. So, there's the card for both runners, more than likely. Oh, and a frog suit on Mitch's side. <laughs> what if we'll make use of that sometime? Hey, you never know. 3 1 start, a, you know, something else could be very valuable. Pro A now doing his absolute best to get caught up here as well as he gets that same frog suit. Yeah, so both runners are in a 6-10 now. Um, Pro having a fire flyer right off the bat, and uh, oh, very nicely done, uh, killing Chi Chi for um, he's able to strike him there. Kind of looking like he's in full Rambo mode at this point, as he was just pointing and shooting as quick as he possibly could, and thankfully no damage there. But unfortunately, did lose the fire flyer just a minute later, but still no big deal. He is okay now. He's small Mario, but that's okay. He's out of 6-10, so we're good. Yeah, and we had the World Series airship at the end. Um, either one or um, Optimer Power up at this point, uh, just gonna play low like normal, getting past those flame jets and getting to the end where Salty Morton awaits. And he's a heavy one this time. And pretty big too, not a free hitter. It's taking a hit, but it's a four hit Morton this time. But gets it done. A bit of a beefy boy, and as we do go, do go into the next world, check that your guess is in. What's coming next? Yeah, still relatively close between the two runners here. Um, just been trying that slight, slight edge from execution so far. So yeah, will free be next, chat? Well, the first three chat or guesses in chat, and then the two later, uh, all seem to think world three is coming next. So we'll have to see if you're right. Well, nope, the game pulled a fast one on us. We got World 7. It's like that guy from the uh, Allstate commercial that has the dollar on the fishing pole. Oh, you're so close. Game's just kind of taken it away from us. Right, you are. We got the Navy to start off here. Um, yeah, Pro are going to play it as well. Ooh, ooh and it looks like, looks like maybe up a cloud, or did the Princess give it another one out? I'm guessing it would have had to have come from the princess because the frog was the last Hammer Brother fight we saw in World 2. So yeah, two clouds, most likely on either runner's side. We'll have to wait and see if they come in handy very quickly. Yeah, and right off the bat, both forts are playable here. Unless the free fort world set, we haven't quite seen the rest of the map yet. But yeah, we got we got carpet fort six at free here on Mitch's side. Uh, so yeah, I imagine they'll make similar plays here. Just just see the fort play a fort in general. Absolutely, you know, this is one of those cases you don't want to be wrong because Pipe Amnesia does set in. Pro A, on the other hand, said, Pah! Pipe Amnesia, what's that? And has gone on to find that that is a required fortress. So the first one, I don't know where it would have been. I Obviously, we don't know what happened on the other side of the map. It could have been a non-necessary fortress still. So that's been four fortresses in the last two worlds and only one of them. each was required. Yeah, so unfortunately, the, the other are a gamble. You're not paying out for Pro A. Um, so yeah, this uh, the second forward is required, but uh, Mitch extending his leave ever so slightly. He's going to play his Prana stage, though, mainly because he does not have a uh, use box or star to, to just get past it a bit quicker. 
Yeah, I'm very curious to see what those levels are that he just skipped. We'll have to wait and see on Pro Race side what we've got. Yeah, well, there's a star um, on Mitch's side, so we'll see how it... I'm very curious to see what Pro A does here. If he decides to double cloud... Okay, looks like he thought about it and then said, no, I'd rather keep those. So we'll have to wait and see if that was a great decision or if that was one that was just maybe used a little preemptively. Yeah, in game one, they had, they had their fair sh share of clouds to go around. So, um, interesting decision by Pro Aid. Um, deciding to hold on to him for later um, opportune use here. We'll see if it pays off for him. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we haven't seen Atlantis yet. We haven't seen 5 9 yet. We haven't seen 6 6 or 7 5. Well, we saw 7 5 once, but it wasn't required. I mean, come on. Give us something that we need required because that would be a huge advantage on the side of Pro Aid keeping those clouds and still having them in his inventory. And just like that, we're smacked out in the middle of the game here. World 4 Giant Land on Mitch's uh, screen here. And those have a vanilla start. Uh, that pipe leading to uh, the normal area where you, where you normally go through here. It's, we got the pyramid stage once again. I'm definitely with Diesel Pilot in chat. He said, play 2-5, good call. And I absolutely agree with that. I mean, Pro A may look like he's a little bit behind right now, but he still has two clouds in his inventory. Hopefully those give him a lot of use later. For sure. I'm, I'm, liking, I'm liking the play to hold onto the clouds, especially when you hear, see like 6-7 and 2-5. Definitely two levels there, you know, they're kind of average. They're not like a huge time sinks, so. Any props to him for that. Mitch Flower Power with a little bit of a problem with some Sludge Brothers. The Bricks did not take them out, so they ended up joining him on the bottom. But thankfully, he was still able to get through with his small Mario, and now into 7-4. Yeah, 7-4 is kind of long, even with the all going disabled. So <laughs> I, I don't foresee Pro-8 clouding this, but you never know. We'll see. Absolutely, and what a place a star or a frog suit would have been. I mean, able to get through just a little bit quicker, and even with just a little bit more control, these runners are so good with the different suits. A frog suit here, I think, would have been a big time save for sure, but both runners having already used them, just not going to be a factor. Yeah, I, th I think Mitch only tried like frog percent once or twice, but <laughs> I'm not sure how, how skilled he is in that. <laughs> Maybe if we have to go into a rematch, we'll challenge him to a far frog percent match or something. Maybe not. Either way, probably not for the pyramid scene. And he is going to be getting through here as quickly as possible, whereas Mitch Flower Power now into 5F1. Yeah, I've been probably uh, cleaning up the pyramid stage here. Um, Still about a two-stage difference, again, mainly because of that cloud usage that uh, Mitch uh, did early on. Pro is still holding on to those two clouds, hoping it will pay off to, to be useful later. Yeah, and really just two levels between the two are those two clouds, like you just said. I mean, these guys are still very, very close. It, Mitch Flower Power was leaving, Pro A is entering 7-4. Now Mitch Flower Power utilizing that opportune uh, pipe here. And okay, he's gonna wait and play the Hammer Brother. I, Kind of curious to see if he'd skip that or not with the scene, uh, scene transition clip. No yeah, opting to, opt to play the Hammerbird stage here and gets a peewing out of it. Interesting. You know, that's always kind of a big question, in my opinion, as to what do you go after in a in a race like this. You know, you know your opponent's going to be very fast. You have to expect that. You have to play at such a high level. Do you need those items? And apparently the answer was yes. He wanted a P Wing. And with uh, 7F1 still looming, yeah, I, I think that's a good call. Yeah, it's just 1 4 World 4. Mitch is out of there. So, uh, what's next, chat, as far as the next world? Get your guesses in. Apparently on 7 4, Pro A actually gained six seconds. That information from Diesel Pilot. So really appreciate him uh, making that dis uh, discovery for us. And really a very close one still. I mean, Pro A's got a couple of Hammer Brothers in the way. One definitely will be in the way, but that is possibly the P-Wing. Uh, 
Hammer Brothers, so should be a good play on his side as well. Interesting well free setup here. So uh, Double Hammer looks useful, but at the same time, he had that fort right in the middle there, so um, just it really depends on if that fort's acquired or not. But um, yeah, I know, I know it's not too uh, relevant because I don't think neither runner has two hammers to uh, do that play, but it's interesting to point out. So as soon as this fight with Larry is, or I'm sorry, Iggy is over, Proe is going to be holding on to three clowns with four worlds to play, and that could get very big very fast, especially depending on who has what level stored between, you know, these next four worlds. So I'm, I'm very curious to see how those help him. Hopefully he doesn't wait too long. You know, at some point you're just going to have to bite the bullet and say, hey, I got to play these. But you've still got World 6 coming. You've still got World... Uh, well, three to play, he's about to go into. So, World 6, World 5, a couple of really good pl places for him to use those, especially when you can save into a, a pipe transition and you don't lose your spot. Yeah, so I'm curious if Pro's going to start making use of some clouds here to at least, at least skip um, these normal levels and play the Fortress. It looks like he is, so uh, there we go. He's starting to make some use of his clouds here to uh, catch up to Mitch a little bit here. And 5-4 looking every bit required as it's in the 3-F1 spot normally, but it is going to be a split place where the runners will have to go back and forth, so we definitely will not see the cloud come out on that one for sure. Yeah, so apparently the lock is still in front of the uh, World Free Castle here, so um, this fort not required. Yeah, looks like Mitch is making his way to the other pipe to uh, get a shortcut to the other fortress that he has to play here. Okay, and a hammer does come out on the side of Mitch Flower Power. We'll see if Crowley winds up getting that one as well. Uh, that's going to be possibly be a very big thing for him, because World 6 is still coming up, so still a lot left to find out here. Yeah, I've been pro getting the bad news now that, uh, yeah, there's a lock still in front of the castle, so he's going to have to... Uh, Following which footsteps in 5 4 here. We've got the angry sun on a cloudy day in 5 4 for Pro A. And now Miss Flower Power finishing up the second fort and the last fort of World 3. He'll be on to his fight with Wendy in just a moment. Yeah, so so far pretty linear. Not much, not much decision making here in this uh, game, too. Yeah, aside from the cloud usage, just of course. So interestingly, I've been tracking this as we've been going along. World 5 normally has two fortresses, and World 6 normally has three. We've already seen the two one-fortress worlds between World 1 and World 4. So World 5 and World 6 will share five fortresses between them. I'm curious how many of those are going to be required here, because that itself could be a huge factor and without 7f1 coming out 7f2 we've seen a couple of a couple of fortresses so far but we've not seen some of those iconic even trickier fortresses yet so i wouldn't be surprised at all to see a couple of maybe preemptive strikes maybe go for a tail maybe go for a p-wing just hoping for fort knox yeah so it seems despite the cloud usage uh Mitch is, going to, Mitch is going to maintain his lead here, and look at this World 5. we got a fort required right off the bat, and potentially the second fort to uh, build a bridge so they don't, so they can skip the uh, tower level here. You know, not necessarily the worst World 5 I've ever seen, but we also haven't seen most of the world yet. Obviously, we still have Sky Zone, and there is a propensity to play a lot of levels, depending on how the pipes and the tower work out. And yeah, just one hit on Wendy's side, just a side salad today. So yeah, it looks like that the tower level will not be required, um, but that's possible. If those two pipes loop, then the tower will be required, but um, basically I two or three chance here that one of those pipes takes you to the sky half. 
Absolutely. I mean, we have the option of it going right next to the castle, being in that five nine five eight spot, or it could be one at the very end. So if those are connected, like you said, then that could be a huge play uh, on the top. We'll just have to wait and see what happens there. Mitch still opting to play Hammer Brothers. Very interesting. Um, I wonder if he's looking for a hammer suit or a fire flower to take care of Bowser or... Not sure. He's usually one to skip uh, Hammer Bros, but seeing him play him is a very interesting decision. That is interesting for sure to see one and play it and not the other one. But... Oh, and <laughs> Mitch taking it to death. Um, he, he actually wasn't needed. Um, you just go on the pipe and you're right there at the airship. So <laughs> unfortunately, it will be Small Mario going to the sky here. Yeah, a little bit of an interesting play there. That's, you know, not necessarily one we ever think about or even talk about. But with the Paradox Pipe, like you just said, it's it's one if you do go through it, you'll wind up where the tower is. You've already played those fortresses. But then again, he just took a P-Wing into 8-2, so not, or I'm sorry, 8-1, which is not a terrible level to have a P-Wing on. So, you know, it works out in the end. Yeah, so having that P-Wing uh, pretty useful here. Um... So yeah, a pro should follow be following him here shortly. He's gonna opt to not play any of the hammer bros, so gonna save a bit of time there, just just not doing that. Just like that, we have we have about a one level uh difference between them now. And Pro is not gonna be able to utilize the same strategy that Mitch Flowerpower did here, strictly because he doesn't have that P Wing. But a Fire Flower is not a terrible one to have here either, especially if you can get going. Oh, and look at this, 8-1 eight, eight, fo followed by 8-2 in, in this uh, sky half here. Very interesting. Absolutely. 3-6 coming up for Pro A, and then he will be catching up as quickly as he can. So really just about a level difference. I wonder if Pro A will go ahead and utilize his last cloud here. Might not be a bad decision. Go ahead and get into the World 5 castle, whatever airship that's going to be, and get going into World 6 as quickly as you can. And a vanilla angry sun in eight two as well. Uh, Mitch having a bit of trouble there, losing losing his uh, power ups, but get gets it through. Uh, and yeah, he's playing Hammer Bros. He's uh he's wanting some items here. We'll see what he gets out of it. A hammer. Now that's interesting. He's already got two hammers in his inventory, so unfortunately not going to be a huge success here. But Mitch going ahead and using that P wing, really just down to hammers and a star. I. I think you're absolutely right. I think he's going to be looking after uh, a possibility of some item that he can use offensively against Bowser there. Yeah, possibly. Meanwhile, Pro does take the lead from a um, just uh, just from skipping, skipping those hamburger fights. Um, yeah, um, World Six is left over, correct? Yeah, according to my notes, and it should be a three fortress World Six. So. This is going to be interesting for sure, and I think, you know, we've got ourselves a really tight race. I think Mitch Flower Power may still have a cloud, but I am very curious to see what happens next. Neither runner getting oh, it. Crap. Neither runner getting it, man. <laughs> At least we got Sync there. Always good to see. The Sync just gets exciting, you know. You know how close these runners are, despite six worlds. Despite going into World 7 at just about 24 minutes, you know, these guys are really good and really close to keep it this tight, this far in. Okay, we see one 610 panel. Um, we got free 7 to start off. Um, it is it is late in the run, so I wonder if they will go for the item or just uh, forgo it here. Yeah, normally I would say they're probably just going to skip it, but I'm actually a little surprised Mitch Flower did skip it. I kind of fully expected him to go to that coin heaven. Maybe he feels like he's just wasting too much time and decided not to go for it. I find that a little interesting. Yeah, World 7, um, you know, very late in the run. It's uh, These runners just want to go, go, go. Oh, and Mitch just gets gulp, gulp, gulped. <laughs> That is absolutely terrifying. I mean, what a, a, a immediate play on Worlds 2-3. That is not necessarily something you expect to see, but for no reason. I mean, it feels like Boss Pass does show up quite often here. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Pro getting the dodge in there. Very nicely done, so...
So yeah, unfortunately, uh, boss best guys Neil. Um, so yeah, Pro's gonna soon as least ever so slightly here. I'm a little curious. I think you know you've got the hammers. There's literally no other place to use it. I, I would go almost for a blind rock here just to see what. Ha okay, never mind. It's not even a factor. Wow, <laughs> four pipes right off the bat. So you, so you know they're they're pretty much useless. So just uh, we're in for a long haul world six here. Absolutely, and this is an equalizer in its own right because you know depending on what levels come up, depending on which levels the runners prefer, you know if they get some of those, it may even be a seven five if one of the runners prefers it over another. You know, that, that could be a huge thing for either of the guys getting caught up or even move forward. So they had a choice of which level one to play. Um, so the top, top path took you to 5.8, the bottom path took you to 5.7. So both, both sky levels, very interesting. Oh, uh, Logi got Fort Knox once again. Um, I wonder if Proe has an extra P-Wing. He might, he might try and uh, gamble on this one. We'll see. Yeah, it might be a really good option for him to do it. He's going to have to play the Hammer Brother here. I think uh, Mitch Flower Power actually just put it to sleep, but it's going to have a hammer, so Pro A definitely has one if he didn't before. Yeah, definitely easy, easy play to make just to uh, use the hammer there. Um, does not opt to using items, though, so you have to do the same play Mitch does here to uh, go in the basement and grab that Tanuki suit so he can fly up to the pipe and clear this fort. With how stingy the items have been in the set so far, I, I can't say I blame either of them for not taking that intentional lava bath, going back, getting a peeling or something, and then coming right back in. So, I you know, it's it's a good play in my opinion. I think it's not a bad one at all, but you just got to have item management, and that's what these guys are looking for right now. Yeah, but we've seen at a beta stage, based on 7-3 on Mitch's side, um... Has Nuki suit. I'm um, surprised he hasn't de boosted yet to uh, do this a little bit faster, but hey, better safe than sorry. You know, he could be going for a command at the end of World 6, so yeah, I, I gotta be a fan of that one. Yeah, you love to see it. So, um, so yeah, he's, he's able to skip that, uh, that, that, uh, coin chip that Pro A played, so that's, that's mainly the difference here, uh, time wise. And we have 742 once again. It's Final Fort World 6. Alright, looking like no Tonoki command at the end for Mitch Flowerpower. Pro is still in the runnings for it, but obviously not going to be a huge factor. And, and look at that. Once once again, you got two of the tall uh, fire spitters in that in that section there. Pretty much impossible to get past while taking a hit. I mean. I'm kind of curious if this is a required 7F2. I, I wonder if the runners had used a cloud here if this is even a required fortress. I guess we'll just have to wait and see in a moment. Yeah, you see Pro with the tail is able to get rid of one of those uh, Prana plants there, so uh, he'll get through this much faster and much safer too compared to Mitch. And a little damage boost there, not a big deal at all. And it was not, well, it was required technically because the lock was blocking the other paths, so it's the only option they had. Yeah, and well, and I was meaning if he had clouded over seven F two, that's a really risky strategy. Oh like, yeah, fortress, well, bro. What are you doing? Oh, he, 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 he realizes. Oh dear, that is that is huge. You have to know where you're going, man. Thankfully, it wasn't that big of a time loss, but he is going to be an airship down now. Yeah, he, he saw he saw the lock break. He must have thought, okay, there must be a bridge at the end. So, um. Yeah, it doesn't hurt to do a quick check though. It takes like two seconds, so <laughs> hate to see it, but yeah, it's, it's still a close race. Absolutely, you know we're going into World Eight, and of course that does mean get your guesses in for how many bridges to Bowser we're gonna have this time. And you know probably still has a chance here. He went for an off-screen wand grab, not quite successful there, not easy to do at all. But World Eight has options, so hopefully he picks the right ones here. And right off the bat, we see a Navy stage. Mitch is going to go ahead and play it. It is 6-1 uh, here, the uh, elevator, escalator, fort, I guess you call it. So Mitch Flowerpower opting to keep his tail this time, and he's doing a rapid jump movement on the basically tile-perfect section there. 
But interesting that he went for that. Last time he did go after the speed route, and now this time he's decided to go for a fire flower. So very interesting. Yeah, if I probably make it the same play, just to get this four out of the way, see, so um, potentially I'll come back here. Um, let's say their pipe has to be acquired somehow, but yeah. Yeah, kind of an interesting strategy here, but one that both players do appreciate and I think respect is you see the fort, you play the fort, and like you said, it's hopefully the option where they don't have to come back to this section, but still a lot of pipes to look at, and this is anybody's game. Yeah, not, not seeing any locks so far, so it may have multiple bridges on the final screen here, it just depends. I'm just going to do some more exploring though, not going to dive into any stages just yet. Oh, we did see one, two locks there. See, I'm thinking of the forts on, on Hambridge that may be required here. Oh. Yeah, Mitch, Mitch is going back, yep. Oh, Meemaw Pro is going to play the same fort here, so he has a slight lead at this point. The only thing he doesn't have at this point is the knowledge that Mitch Flower Power has with all where the pipes go and such, but what an incredibly close race. I think a lot of it may come down to who gets the mac and cheese at the very end and who was able to hold on to the fire flower. That fire kill is a little bit quicker than the jump kill. So, you know, we, we got ourselves a race. Yeah, it just, it just really all depends which, which pipes uh, Pro HX first here uh, coming out of this fortress. So it'll be interesting to see what he does. And just no knowledge gained from that at all. You can go back to the dark room, you can maybe look around real quick, but no knowledge gained. I mean, we still have to figure out where Bowser is. Yeah, I'm kind of... I'm kind of surprised Mitch didn't check the locks in the dark maze to see if either one of those broke. Oh, look at this. It was the very first one all along, and there's a bridge. Absolutely crazy. So either two, Fortress, or the first one they did play, and pro -A now into another stage that is not required. Uh, he just needs to get the information on where Bowser is. Meanwhile, Mitch Flower Power, first into the Bowser's Castle, he may be the first one out as well. Yeah, unfortunately, Pro had to do some extra exploration there that Mitch has already done. Um, oh. look, look at there, the mac and cheese. First try through the wall. You love to see it. Absolutely gorgeous. It was pristine, crystal. It was gorgeous. Folks, that's going to be 35 Bowsers. And start getting your GGs in chat for both of these runners who have done magnificent. What a wonderful run. Absolutely. You see, the, you see Bowser go down with the fireballs on Mitch's side. Pro right behind it with a hammer suit. Um, but yeah, get your G's out for Mitch Flower Power. He will take game two in this best of five affair with an official race time of. Thirty-three minutes and eight seconds. Absolutely astounding. And look oh. at this. Pro Pro also with the first try clip there. Very nicely done. Just a few hammers, and Bowser is down on pro -A side. So, yeah. GG as well to pro -A 007. Very close race, you know. Just just that World 8 routing and just uh, just some extra decisions there, here and there, is what made a difference, really. Yeah, he'll finish with time of 33 minutes and 48 seconds. So, not even a minute difference. Absolutely astounding. I mean, these guys have been so close. It seems like a couple times... You know, it goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And hopefully, you know, this game three is going to become a really just a do or die situation. So I, I kind of expect Pro A to get a little bit more aggressive this time around. And hopefully so. I mean, he's in a must win situation. The item management has been stellar on both sides. I mean, we saw Mitch Flower Power go after some items that Pro A did it. Both runners just kept it very tight throughout that entire race and absolutely incredible. I cannot wait to see what happens next. Hopefully Pro A extends this out a little bit for us. For sure. And yes, this is a best of five affair. So uh, yeah, Mitch is up 2-0. He needs just one more to uh, take this bronze medal. But Pro A is still in this. So hold on to your butts. <laughs> 
Absolutely, and we're going to be getting set up here as quickly as we can. Callus, no, we have not yet seen an Atlantis, which I'm personally disappointed about. I want to see an Atlantis. I want to see a 7-5. I want to see a 6-6. I want this game three to be an absolute doozy, one that's going to be talked about for a long time. I, I feel like that's not too much to ask. Chat, what do you think? Yeah, I'll see if I work my magic this time around and uh, get a seed roll for him and get a nicer seed rolled, quote unquote. And as we do transition, uh, and yeah, we do know that the overlay doesn't match. Uh, we are doing a best of five. I apologize. We are doing a best of five. So don't go anywhere. This isn't over yet. We still got plenty of racing to do. Crowley 007 looking for a first win. And he can do it. He absolutely can do it. These guys are so, so very good at this game. At everything they do in this, they are fantastic speedrunners in their own rights. And I cannot wait to see what happens next. But in the meantime, as we get these runners set up, grab your drinks, grab your bathroom breaks, and get back here. You're not going to want to miss a thing. All right, we are going to be getting started here in just one moment. The runners are comparing hashes. They're readying up. Game three is coming as soon as we can. Get your guesses in chat. Which world is starting first? Are we going to get a reverse world order? Are we going to get vanilla world order? Are we going to get something really ridiculous? Like maybe odds first, even second. We'll have to wait and find out. These guys are getting started. Yeah, the game sort of teased us in game two there with the, the world one and world two start back to back. But yeah, they sort of, they sort of jumped over to world seven on us. So so yeah, go and get your guesses in. Definitely a great matchup so far. I mean, these guys have done so good to get to this point. You know, they have not had easy paths. Pro A007 taking down Human Mustard, taking down Animus United, and then Mitch Flower Power actually took you down this time i know you guys tend to go back and forth most of the time you guys both just absolutely exceptional runners and that one definitely could have gone either way so just kind of how the randomizer goes this time and then uh, miss flower power also taking on johnny link and then falling to the hacksters so i mean these guys have come a long way you know miss flower power falling to the hackster is i mean it could go either way in that one as well both guys very exceptional runners and then teak staking down pro a 007s which sets up their final uh which i'm personally very excited about i cannot wait to see it that of course is tomorrow night at 8 30 eastern at this channel so don't go anywhere um actually i guess you can go somewhere between now and then but come right back because you don't want to miss it <laughs> and let's say we have war five start with seven nine as a starting level so a bit, a bit on the longer side. This is, you know, it's, it's a maze. It's kind of tricky to navigate um, from casual perspective, but it's not too bad. Mitch getting that mushroom from the center block there. Pro's gonna do the exact same thing. You know, I'm not really a surprise. That's a really good place to start. Having that mushroom, especially with this enemy set, any little protection does help, and that's gonna go a long way.
right you are. Mitch having a slight execution advantage at this point, but it's definitely not definitely not uh, far from over. Pro eight, two games down, he's he's really got work. He's really got to uh, pull out all the cards here. Uh, you know, can't really hold anything back. You know. Yeah. If you've got something, you got to use it here. This World 5 is going to be a bit longer, it looks like. You know, obviously, we don't know what the top looks like yet, but uh, just really nothing on the bottom level worth talking about except for three pipes. So they're going to get a Paradox pipe, but then, you know, this Fortress player may not be required. 7 of 2, that's a big one. And look at that right at the start, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, and Mitch going for that power up uh, takes a lava bath there. And gets into a Force Hammer Brother fight with two Sludge Bros. Being kind of trolly on him, sort of to jump a little bit. Yeah, a terrifying place to be. Uh, Pro A going ahead and using that Paradox Pipe. Interestingly enough, I wanted to get a look at the top and see if that Fortress is required. It looks like that is going to be exactly what he needed because 7F2 is going to be a required Fortress here. Yeah, but well, not technically required. It does save time, though, um, having to play two extra levels to go around the lock there. So, yeah, definitely the play to make. But look at this. Mitch, Mitch is actually going to uh, commit to this sky half and go around the lock. Interesting. What an interesting play for sure. That is going to be interesting to see who gets out of theirs first. If Pro A is able to get out first, obviously that's going to be a th big thing. But the other thing we haven't talked about is what if this fortress is not required? We don't know yet if this is going to actually break that lock. This could spell trouble on Pro A side. We, of course, will wait and see if this does build a bridge. Then obviously we're going to have to you know, go back up and take on the extra two levels that Mitch Flower Power is going through. And that other fortress could actually be World 1's fortress. Not likely, but it is definitely possible because that lock is not necessarily required. Thankfully, though, that is not a built bridge, and Pro A is able to be able to move on here quickly. Yeah, just just so taking a second look at the maps there, it, it is a 2 4 World 5, so that so the blue lock will always break that lock in, in this case. So when you get to free forts, it's when you gotta actually. Second guess those, those lock choices. Yeah, I'm still actually trying to remember that uh, blue four, blue lock stuff. It shouldn't be that hard. And you're absolutely right. If it is three worlds or three fortresses in the world, then yeah, that would be a thing. But either way, thankfully, that wasn't a missed gambit on uh, Pro A side. Obviously, a couple of these 50 50s have not gone in his favor. So uh, that could be the entire game right there but thankfully not going to be a factor this early. Now Proe finishing up his fight with a coin ship, and Mitch Flowerpower is going to be right behind him. An early hammer, we'll see if that comes out to play. Yeah, it looks like Mitch is not going to be able to get that hammer, unfortunately. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a huge trip for him, not to mention it's a coin ship, so he's definitely going to avoid that, so... Pro going to be up a hammer here. We'll see if it proves advantageous or not. And a very quick hand stage level does provide a fire flowers. So if we see any more of those, obviously they'll, go, they'll give us fire flowers. And now our runner is very tight going into 7 8. 7 8 Piranha Alley, I believe it's called. Yeah, this one, this one can be tough depending on what kind of uh, spawns you get in these pipes. But yeah, more than likely they will take the shortcut in the middle to. Uh, Get, get just get past this mess absolutely and, and not just because it's a terrible time getting through that extra part but also because it does give you that item it's going to be a fire flower on both sides for our runners so they're going to be leaving seven eight very close to each other and fully loaded with the fire flower yep once again mitch mitch can improve slightly faster just just from the better execution on his end um but yeah, we have the World 4 airship, and Mitch is going to uh, make some make use of some P-Speed to just breeze, breeze on through and pro right behind him. You know, we kind of have to look at the differences between these two runners, and I think, you know, we've talked about it multiple times. Mitch Flower Power has been executing brilliantly, and we expect that. You know, he's a speedrunner that's known for his speed runs. I mean, he's, he's done a lot of things that brought a lot of awareness to SMB3. So, you know, we know that he's going to be executing really, really well. Whereas Pro A has a lot more in the side of randomizer experience. So if the randomizer starts doing what the randomizer does, 
that's going to play into his favor. Right, you are. So chat, what's next world? Get your guesses in, quick. Looks like a P-Wing will come out on the side for uh, both runners. Obviously, we'll see in just a moment. And the Princess's Letter, you know, with that P-Wing going to be a little bit of a factor. And an early pipe looks like they're going to be free to skip a level, but that's just about it. And congrats to everyone who guessed World 6. So this is interesting. Uh, Mitch Flower Car did just get a hammer, and so did Pro A. That is going to be the second hammer on Pro A's side. Once World 3 comes up, that very well could be a, a huge shift for him. That actually could be a very big advantage. Absolutely. Um, haven't seen the pipe situation here yet, but uh, maybe you might see a hammer used here shortly as well, especially for Mitch's side, having only one hammer at this point. Actually, we have seen all four pipes at this point. The next one is going to be right next to where he comes out. So four pipes in World 6 all together means this is going to be a very linear World 6, which we haven't really seen the last two times. And I think that's actually going to play into Mitch Flower Power's favor here. Wow, so back-to-back, so, uh, a -back, uh, world, uh, world 6 with uh, not too useful pipes. So def definitely, um, definitely not a bit on the linear side to start off here. Pro A utilizing the strat of uh, spawning that parabutyl early. It does have a propensity to like to go down, so you do jump underneath it. And uh, he was able to spawn it early so that he didn't have a problem there. The, it does take just a little bit more time, but he is now through it. And just like that, now Mitch Flower Power also has two hammers as well. If there's a double rock strat, both players are going to use it. Mitch taking the lower path and finds seven two. So uh, without a tail, he's gonna have to do the normal strat of building that note block bridge, unless he unless he tra goes with the clip here, which he probably won't with that fire champa right in his way. Well, the star means he is gonna have to wait for just a moment before he is able to move on, and I think he's going to be fed up enough to not go after it. So Pro A looking for another item. He does get the star, we'll see if he's able to get the P-Speed. Maybe not. Uh, so he's also going to either go for the Clip or the Note Bridge Block. Note Block Bridge, that's not easy to say, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it looks like both Brunners do have two hammers at this point. So so yeah, World 3 will likely be at play here. You know, I'm starting to feel like I work in a hardware store. We've got sinks, we've got hammers, we've got all kinds of great stuff. They're gonna build your bridges into Bowser's castle, so best of luck. Interesting decision on the side of Mitch Flower Power. He went ahead and took a piece uh, wing into a fight with a, with a uh, camera brother, which actually was the Sledge Bros. And he's looks like he's going to go ahead and save those hammers and go ahead and play seven six, like we see Pro A doing as well. Yeah, seven seven, the the uh, muncher run here. Um, and I saw two ten tiles. Uh, was that a third one at the start? Is this like a one fort world six we got? Very interesting. Not necessarily something you usually see. There's a lot of space for fortresses, and of course, one of our worlds will have three fortresses like we normally would in the vanilla game. We just don't know which world yet. And so far, we've only seen three fortresses. We have a lot to go still. Right, you are, and there's boss pass again in free seven here, looking for another meal. Oh, and Mitch, uh, and he up behind the uh, <laughs> the platform there. I almost, I almost gave him another meal, but uh, takes care of him, no problem. And Hitbox is, again, one of those. Uh, he was running alongside of the boss pass, had just a little bit of a cutback to finally deal the damage on with the Fire Flower. Oh! And boss back is, boss pass is back for round two. Yeah, so you got a meal at both players tonight. You love to see it. <laughs> and there's two for Mitch. <laughs> Take two, boss pass strikes again. Yeah, um, you know, in, in four sixes, you know, you, you, you don't tend to see many enemies here. Um, 
you know, as soon as you see a giant enemy, it's like, okay, you, you, you might be safe, but, uh, yeah, as soon as you see, like, one enemy there, just all by himself, it's like, it's like the calm for the storm in a way. <laughs> Absolutely, you're wondering, wait, 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 what's coming up next? Speaking Boom. of what's coming next... <laughs> Alright, so not going to be required Atlantis, as there are two spots here. And Prairie 007 going to be joining in the normally angry sun level. This time, we've added a boss pass again! Yeah, what is this? Free levels in a row of boss pass. <laughs> he, he, really like, he really enjoys his, uh... He really enjoys his meals, don't he? You know, I guess it's summertime. Might as well go where it's cold. Get yourself a, a friendly place in a couple of these levels and you're good to go. And, you know, a couple of meals on the side of both of our runners, so... There you go. That, that is what it is. So yeah, still still a very tight race. Uh, Exiting World Two finally. Um, yeah, just just uh, probably going going to Atlantis there and having to take that death is really a difference here. But but yeah, pro pro with the P wing. Uh, gonna go for this off screen wall grab once again here. Hey, there we go. Finally gets one, and yeah, we're gonna. We're gonna have even closer gap ahead of us, so uh, yeah, chat. What's next world gonna be? Get your guesses in for sure. We've seen five, we've seen six, we've not seen a lot of fortresses. I'm personally hoping for something a little bit more archaic, like maybe let's make a, a world seven with three fortresses. That could be interesting. And it looks like for those of you who guessed uh, world four, um, congratulations. And look at this, we got two forts right off the bat here. Um, so yeah, we got to just flip a coin, a topper to the right there. Which one will build our bridge? I think I got to pull right this time. I don't know why, I don't have any reason, but I that's my guess. I'm going to say right. And just like that, we have divergence here. So whoever whoever uh, gets this bridge, bridge built first is going to have a huge advantage here. Absolutely. And if neither of these are required, that's going to be even funnier because we haven't seen the right side yet. So if there's a lock over there and a fortress, that also could be required. Right, you are. But fortunately, uh, Mitch, Mitch did guess correct. So uh, he's got his bridge built. He'll be making his way out of World Free here shortly. Yeah, what a terrible, terrible way to go. I mean, it's how the randomizer works. Sometimes you get the right choices, sometimes you don't. I picked right, I was wrong, unfortunately, for Pro A. That doesn't mean he's going to have to play an extra level here, but you just don't know. You just don't know. He had to make a call. That's the one he went with, and it went away from its favor. But, you know, we still have a lot of game to play. We're just now going into World 4. Seems like we just did this chat. Get your guesses in again. Yeah, you just hate to see those uh, coin flips sometimes, you know, just, uh, you really don't know until you, until you try one and see what happens, so, it's just nature randomizer for you. And even if you knew, I mean, 5F1 was on the side of Mitch Flowerpower, that was the required one. You know, it's it's one of those things, it's just a guess, if 5F1 normally doesn't build a bridge, this time it does. And look at this world free we got here, the Waterland, um, I think, really, I think uh, Double Hammer is definitely going to be a play for both runners here. Yeah, a lot of hammers have come out so far, so you might as well use them. World 6 is already said and done, no place to use it there. World 2 could still have one, World 4 obviously did not, so if you've got them, you might as well use them. There's not going to be much of another chance. Yep, and this seed has definitely had a surplus of hammers, so both players will definitely take advantage of this, I have no doubt. Yeah, to skip three, and you've at least got two fortresses here, maybe three. We haven't seen the entire world three yet. You know, any chance that you have to come back, skip three levels is worth it for sure. Yep, so there's one there's one piper out the bat here. Um, I'm just going to check it out and see where it leads. And we do have a two-four world three here. I'm just going to stay and play it, it looks like. So yeah, it's looking like one lock is in front of the castle at this point, uh, more than likely. So it could, it could potentially be both forts required. 
you know, maybe if Pro A is able to make a decision here and hit the fortress correctly, uh, they did have a fortress they could have played earlier. So Pro A decides to go ahead and play that one, and it is the right one. Any difference in time at that point would be virtually lost over the Lost World. But really, all that comes down to is whether or not that fortress is required, and if so, is that pipe required? So, it looks like Mitch Flower Power about to give us our answer there. Yep, so it did break that lock in front of the uh, pipe right there, and that's more likely going to be our ticket out of here. Oh, it is not! It's going to be one right below right there. So, interestingly, if Pro A either skips or goes through the pipes just like Mitch Flower Power does, he's not going to have to play an extra level either. So leaving, you definitely don't want to be losing time within the world. If you can gain time, obviously that's a huge advantage. If not, keep it even. And so far it looks like Pro A will do that as he does take down the carpet for it. And hopefully he doesn't lose any more time. Yeah, so we have Mitch uh, exiting out of the water world now. So what's next, chat? We've got one, two, and seven still to play. Seven can be a huge problem, depending on how it works out for the runners. So, you know, going to be interesting to see for sure. I think probably is definitely hoping for something way more um, pipe amnesia based, whereas Mitch Flower Power just wants to get through it as quickly as he possibly can. Yeah, speaking of pipe amnesia, we got World Seven, the pipe maze here. Right off the bat, we got a free pipe, Monty, and at least two forts that are on that we can see. So yeah, Mitch is, Mitch is doing his share of exploring here, finds the uh, dead end with the mushroom house. So he's gonna go back and try again. I think the entire prognosis in chat is that everybody, well, I shouldn't say everybody, but there's a, a huge following here for Mitch Flower Power. Totally fine, he's a great runner. You know, a lot of respect for him and all the communities. And Pro A007, also a really good randomizer runner. But I think more than anything, people are just cheering for race four and five to happen. Yeah, absolutely. You love, you love to see the close ones. And uh, yeah, Mitch, uh, getting, getting the runaround. And, ooh, it looks like we have both forts are going to be required in this case. We got a lock and a bridge to build. You know, we were just talking about those really crazy, really kooky uh, possible World 7s, and now we, we virtually have one for all rights. And this is going to be interesting. We'll see how it favors either of the runners, if it even will. Yeah, then we got one one fort that's behind another another level, so <laughs> World Seven not making it easy for him. Now, and the second fortress is actually protected by that five panel. I'm kind of curious on Pro A side if he'll go back and play it before going into that third island. It would be a bit of a time save as he wouldn't have to go back around and figure it all out again. Yep, it would. Yeah, it looks like he's just going to do the simmer play to Mitch here. Just going to, uh, well, he's, he's found the, uh, what, what's acquired now. So he'd probably just do a simmer play here. Just get both forts, um, get back to both forts and get them done. Absolutely. And just no skipping uh, anything, really. If you had any kind of a skip, it'd be two clouds. Is it worth it? I mean, I think that's going to largely depend on what that level is. We still haven't seen 5-9 yet today. We still haven't seen a lot of things. We had Atlantis, wasn't required. Probably now trying to figure out what he wants to do. It looks like he's going to go ahead and go back and play the other fortress. So kind of an interesting decision, but he has to come back to the third island anyway. Yeah, interesting decision. Um, but yeah, his first piranha is going to be uh, required. It's right in the way. And yeah, he's going to be following Mitch at this point. Mitch, Mitch has beat the first fort, though. So, you got the advantage going in. Yeah, absolutely. And really, the biggest thing that we've seen so far on Mitch Flowerpower's side is those 50-50s just seem to be going in his direction quite often, you know, which is obviously very fortunate for Mitch. I'm not on the side of Pro-A. You know, it is what it is, though. You've got to play the randomizer, and sometimes it'll favor you, sometimes it won't. Yep, and we have 4-4 on uh, Mitch just finishing it. Pro-A is right in the middle of it here. Um, 
I'd say it's not a difficult level, but a lack of two is the roaming around. There's actually a second lack of two above him during the second half, which you can't even see, which complicates things even more. Nintendo does a really good job of doing that, where you think you're in the clear. Nope, just kidding. Absolutely. It looks like this force is, is the Air Force this time around. It seems like we've seen the Air Force a number of times today so far. Not exactly an easy level by any means, with it being every bit of a platformer as anything is in this game. Uh, even with Auto Scroller turned off, there are jumped inputs that are missed. There are some other strategies that, you know, sometimes go awry, and this game does have its own problems with memory and other bits and things like that. So, well done on both sides for the runners to get through it the first time and not have to worry about it again. Yeah, the Mitch Chicken's inventory, there are no clouds there, just that one hammer left over. And yeah, Pro still has that fort other fortress to play, so, um, back to reverse tech and play that before you can get out of this world. And we are going to be going into world either two or one after this, so you can go ahead and get your guesses in if you want give you a little bit more time here as we are going to be finishing up world seven here just briefly and this time so far is interesting 22 minutes they're still working through world five obviously the next two could be a little bit quicker but this scene may be taking just a little bit longer than the last two have right you are and with no 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 music boxes uh mitch's got to play the second uh prana stage but it gets a cloud out of the deal so very nicely very nice in this part Oh yeah, that cloud is one of those top tier items, something that you're going to be looking for desperately for, uh, especially if you've got like a 7566, uh, any of those that come up. It's one of those things, yeah, these runners can get through it, but if you don't have to, why bother? Hey look, World 7 Airship and World 7. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Luvid Von Koopa, he's a high jumper this time around. Mitch is small, he's gotta be careful here. It could very well get boxing, but gets it done. Very nice. Excellent job for sure. And now by my math, we have one more world with one fortress and one world with three fortresses. So either of these two are both on the smaller side. That's gonna make the world a lot longer potentially because a fort can be required in two ways, either because it breaks a lock or builds a bridge, or it could be route required, where they do have to play it to continue moving on. Obviously, you could use the cloud in that example, but you know, it is a fortress. Is that going to be as bad as a level you don't know? And look at this, this war one, once again, three fortresses here. At least one is required. And yeah, one of the forces is five of two. And yeah, I, th I think since our pro did not have to explore as much, uh, he's he's closed the gap a bit on Mitch Flower Power here. And, you know, we've talked about it a couple times, that 5F2 is not the required fortress. That's going to be three fortresses for Mitch Flower Power. If pro decides to go a different route, then that could help him out here. Uh, unfortunately, he does not get the wall screen long grab. Uh, yeah, looks, looks like that was, the, that was the way forward for Mitch, so... Uh, very nicely done. You get your free eight here currently. No boss pass this time, but uh, should make things pretty straightforward. Mitch Flower Power is going to be able to play a three world fortress with only playing one. That is a huge advantage for him. Uh, one is going to be required just because it's in the way, but even then, you know, as far as the locks and such go, that's it. And now he's going to be moving on. Curious if we'll take a, a tail here. Okay. Oh. And yeah, for, unfortunately, Proe is uh, playing the incorrect fort here. Yeah, you to see it. Absolutely. It seems like those have just gone in Mitch Flower Power's favor. And conversely, it seems like every time Mitch Flower Power gets it right, Proe gets it wrong. Yeah, we see, we see him equip the Tanuki suit here. Uh, we might see a command here. Our first one tonight, so that'd be nice. You know, I kind of like this item management from Mitch Flower Power. It's got 
kind of the mindset of if you've got an item, use it. You know, the randomizer gives, the randomizer takes away, and sometimes it gives you a really dangerous and very scary level. And oh, a Tanuki oh. screen wand grab, very nice. I, I think you got it. Very nicely done. Uh, that is not an easy trick of out a P wing. So you pretty much have to, you pretty much have to anticipate how many hits the Koopling is going to take, and just sort of work on building your P speed in between, just to sort of have enough time to grab it in time. Very nicely done. Absolutely, and get your commands in because that is a wild Tanuki appears. Now world two with a very vanilla setup so far. We got two levels and then we have the fortress. That fortress will actually open up the, the pipe. I fully expect for both of the runners to go after that and see where exactly it goes. And three games in a row, once again we had the pyramid stage. <laughs> Mitch Flower Power showing off just a little bit there as he's grabbing shells after he hits them all in midair, because hey, why not? Oh, getting stunlocked at the end there. <laughs> Such bro was like, nope, ain't going away just yet. Okay, I am very curious which fortress this is now because both of our runners skipped it. They didn't even give it a chance. They said, hey, I got a cloud, I'm out of here. Yeah, absolutely. Don't don't fart really fault fault him there. Um you know, it's, it's it's not required fortress, so they tend to be longer than normal levels, so easy skip. Absolutely. I mean, we haven't seen 7F1 yet this time. That could have been a very big one to skip just because neither one of the runners had a tail equipped at that point. His flower power picked one up and then immediately went through it. So, I mean, that could have been a huge play in its own right, but it is what it is. Yeah, so see Mitch equipping the fire flower runs in 7F1, so it'll save some time here, but uh, yeah, I still got to go to get to grab, the, grab that Tanuki seat once again to... Uh, Get, get Alan out of here. And I fully expect him not to play a whole lot of Boomerang Brothers at this point. We did see the Hammer Brothers suit in his inventory that come out came out very early uh, in the run for him to grab. So he knows he's got the Hammer Brothers suit and he knows he's not going to have to worry about that uh, in the fight with Bowser. And now he's into World 7. We've got Pro 8 hot on his tail doing his absolute best to get caught up here. But, you know, we've got about a two and a half three level lead at this point. Probably going to have to really pull out a stop to make this happen. Yeah, it's starting to run out of uh, real estate here, unfortunately. Um, you, know, it's, it's, you can still pull something off, but yeah, it's just unfortunate with the uh, two 50-50s uh, in World 4 and World 1 just uh, didn't pay off for them. Yeah, it's one of those things the randomizer gives, the randomizer takes away. You know, we were watching a couple of really outstanding nights of running the last couple nights well, with the finals from the Challenge Cup side, which was brilliantly done. We had Ryko Ryder take down Leslie Pro 04 in a best of five. And it seemed like, you know, Leslie Pro really likes using those items. Ryko Ryder has just been crazy fast. And that put on for an exhilarating show for sure. And, you know, it just kind of went in Ryko's favor that time. I think if we gave him another five, I'd be interested to see what happens. For sure, and uh, yeah, I bet you losing Tanuki suit, um, having to play this last level for the uh, castle here. Finds World 6, uh, he's not going to go for the flying strat, I'm, I'm not sure he's familiar with that one, but uh, in any case, uh, he, might, he might do some statue strats to uh, ex accelerate this a little bit. Yeah. Oh, and look at this, Pro with the Tanuki suit, going to be able to skip the whole basement run and just fly straight up to the pipe. Go save some time there. Absolutely, you just hope it's enough. But yeah, Mitch is going to be done World 7 first, and it's going to be the first one to enter World 8, the Great Equalizer here. So, uh, yeah, for this game free chat, uh, how many bridges to Bowser's Castle will we see? I think for Proe's sake, I've got to hope for zero. I have to hope that zero is the option here. He's going to go ahead and use that music box. I love it. Go ahead and get into this level. Get through 3-6 as fast as you can. Get to World 8 at this point. You need as much time as you can possibly get in World 8, especially before your opponent. He's already in. You might as well go as fast as you can to get in. 
Oh, look at this. Uh, there's a tank stage right off the bat, and it's it's the normal tank stage, so kind of kind of vanilla in that regard. You know, we got five eight. Uh, <laughs> Mitch flying above the Flakety there, just trying not to take a hit. Oh, gets takes one at the end though. But yeah, right after that, we got the uh, super tank stage and the navy stage on the same screen. So I, it would not surprise me if they decided to go ahead and play those. Hey, and speaking of Super Tank, there it is. Yeah, definitely not a bad decision to go ahead and play these these uh, fortresses, especially your already here. You've already played the tanks. There's no way to avoid that. Even a cloud isn't going to skip over that sprite. Might as well go ahead and get done, get through it, get moving on. Now you're in the Super Tanks. Maybe the Navy's going to be next. We'll have to wait and see for sure. But there's one pipe. You go through it. You don't have to come back no matter what happens. Yeah, so Mitch actually has a hammer suit, so he's good there as far as uh, having a, having something to deal with Bowser. But yeah, he's going to play this other four, and it is free off one. Uh, not going for door free, just wants to get, get this done. Don't blame him. Yeah, that's definitely a long, uh, a really good gain on his part. Going for the door three skip, it looks amazing. It, it feels so good when you get it. But when you miss it, that's a lot of time lost. So you don't really gain a whole lot of time, though, doing that. I think it's a really good decision not to play it. You've got a really close race still so far. You've got a few minutes still before Bowser. Keep the lead where you've got it. And I, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, so we're seeing the Hambridge now. Um, look, it's looking pretty linear though so far. Um, yep. So our, our answer is going to be a dark maze here somewhere. So I'm just going to try going upward first. Moves around to the bottom. Tries pipe next to it. No good. So running out of options here. So it's looking like his way is going to be open here. Yeah, very likely with those three fortresses at the beginning, one of which, of course, was not required. Okay, looks like we've got two bridges required, and here comes the Navy. Yep, so uh, at this point, it's 50-50 shot whether this uh, builds that final bridge or not. It still mandatory in either case, so both runners will have to play it, so we shall see shortly. Absolutely, and that's a no-brainer. You see a fort, you play a fort in Bowser's Valley. Whether or not it's required, it is then. You know, even if it's to your luck, it's one you see it, you play it, no questions asked. And that was not the final bridge, so they're gonna, they're gonna have to go back and find that eight fort. So we're looking at either the top left corner of the dark room or the top right. Really, the dark room had all the answers this time, and unfortunately for Proe, he's just not gonna have the time here. A very linear world eight. Uh, really, there was only one way to play it. Unless you knew something that you weren't supposed to, you, you really have no option other than to just play the levels like we've seen both runners do. For sure. But look at this. Proe is going to uh, skip some pipe checks and go straight to the end here, where we know is the final screen. So yeah, I was going to say, a bit of time there. Um, of course, we know this 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 four is not it. Mitch is going to go to the other side and find 8-4 right there. And what do you know? It's 3-4-2. 3F2 will be the final bridge builder, go figure. And that's going to be a fight with Bowser here very quickly. We know Mitch Flower Power already has the Hammond Brothers suit. Uh, really, at this point, Pro A has to go directly to 3F2 to even have a prayer at this point. Yep, so so yeah, I think Pro A has pretty much got narrowed down here. He's, he's going to uh, date one time playing that. Get him to that extra extra area where he knows that the, there's only a uh, eight fort left over somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's got a little bit of knowledge advantage here because he does know there's nothing in the hand level stages. So instead of even wasting time going through those pipes, he found the one to Bowser. Okay, no hand grab there, so he will be able to utilize the fire flower. Go into three F two. Take this out as quickly as possible, but about a level difference between the two. And now Mitch Flower Power into the fight with Bowser. And unless something crazy happens here, I think this game is, this game is over. Yep, he's got his hammer suit. He has made his way through the uh, final quarters here, Bowser's Castle. And uh, yeah, we'll see some clips momentarily and see what happens here.
And how about that? First try once again for Mitch Flower Power. Props to him for the mac, double mac and cheese here. Wow. Absolutely gorgeous. What a beautiful, beautiful clip on both times for him. That's going to be a fight with Bowser. Hi, Bowser. Bye, Bowser. Game over. Get your GGs in chat for Mitch Flower Power, who put on a absolute clinic of a run and is going to be finishing here in just a moment. Absolutely. Uh, sweet for Yo against Proy is no easy feat, but he has done it. He's going to be finishing with its official time of 36 minutes and 5 seconds. So that's two races tonight that were in the 36 minutes and one that was in the 33. Just absolutely incredible runs. And Proe has been a minute and a half at most on all three of these. So an incredible job on Proe's side to really give it a close race and do a fantastic job. I mean, he was hot on his tails the entire time. And a couple of those 50-50s, if they had gone a different way, you almost wonder if we had a different outlook here. Absolutely. If even one of those 50 50s uh, went in Pro's favor, you know, it could have been a much closer race for sure. Indeed. And we are now joined by our winner. Congratulations and GG's to Mitch Flower Power. Oh, sorry. I was muted. Thank you. Yeah, so very nicely done, Mitch. Uh, Thank all, you. all three seeds were just. Uh, you just blazed on through there. A couple of hiccups, but really nothing too bad. So huge props to you, man. And congrats on mac and cheese and game two and three with the final clip there. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. I hate that clip. And uh, getting a first try is it's a stress relief. I, th I think game two there, like if I had missed it, you know, like 10 times or something, he would have caught up. So I think we were close in game two or one. I can't remember. For sure. And, and just for the record, Proy's official time was, uh, 37 minutes and five seconds, exactly one minute difference between you two. So yeah, I think all three seeds, it was, it was relatively close, you know, just uh, just some unfortunate 50-50s um, on Pro's side and just some little hiccups here and there is what made a difference really. Yeah, I lost a crap ton of 50-50s. Um, I won one 50-50, I think in race two, and then I won two in this race. One in world four, I went up and then, did Pro do the same thing that I did in the world five there? Like, saw that it was 7-4-2 and was like, I don't think so. Uh, he actually played that fortress, actually. Oh, broke the lock, whereas I did the two levels instead, right? Yeah, so that, that was pretty much the uh, decision there, so... Very interesting. It wound up being extremely close in that regard still, though, because by the time he got through 7-F-2, you were finishing up the second one, I believe, was from World 3. Uh, so that one actually played off very closely, but then World 1... Pro A actually went up. You went to the where World One Fortress normally was, and that mm -hmm. ended up being the correct one. So that was the other 50 50 there. That's right. That's what that was the, that 50 50. And then I don't know what he did in World Four, but there was another 50 50 there. Yeah. So at the start, you had the fort to, to the north of you and the fort to the east. So it was just a coin flip, pretty much. Well, yeah. So, like, I think I was getting bullied by a bunch of enemies it's really hard for me to keep power-ups in that race so then when i entered that world i was like great a 50 50 just add on the icing right because i was already taking damage and yeah oh yeah and, and uh also i want to mention boss bus got a meal both y'all tonight so i'm sure he's happy there was a in that last seed there there was like three levels in a row where boss bass i was just like leave me alone yeah, that was that was something else there. You, you don't see that every day. <laughs> yeah, yep. But yeah, your overall thoughts um, about the seed, about um, um, no, your experience? Normal rando. Normal rando shenanigans. Yeah, all, all three you seem relatively quick. I mean, it's a couple of long, uh, a couple of long worlds, but at least you didn't see like seven, five or six, six or anything like that. Double hammer actually worked in game three. That was nice. It never works. Yeah, you love to see that too. Just the uh, and both y'all had the hammers for it, so that was that was no problem there. Um, that that scene in particular is very generous with the hammers and whatnot. So yeah, I actually went into these races with uh, the intent to fight a whole bunch of hammer brothers, and I did. I just, just the first seed, the hammer brothers weren't very nice to us. Um, but we got a couple items here and there. 
And we welcome Pro A007. GG's, man. Congrats. Yo, GG, Pro. Yeah, very, very good performance between all two. Is it was still, it was relatively close all three seeds, and it's just, it was, it was great to watch. Uh, definitely watch these back and just, uh, yeah, see how close it was for sure. Good hype for uh, tomorrow. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, tonight. We, I don't know. Game three, I bricked both 50-50s, You know, yeah, it was, it was just one of those nights I could not get. You know, fortune to smile on me today. So, but uh, GG, Mitch. Yeah, it happens. And that last seed there, World Seven, I was like, I w I got to the end, and I was like, I hope this is a fortress. And then I noticed for a second, I was like, wait a minute, we have to do both of them. That was yeah, prepared for that. Yeah, and once I saw that, uh, it's like I doubled back because I had the route already. Yeah. So, like, okay, I'll take care of that, and then you know, slide back. But uh, yeah, I just. I just couldn't. I just yeah. I missed both. I missed the fifty-fifty in world uh, four and world one. I played the wrong four both times. That's probably a minute right there. And it was a minute between our race because I I won those fifty-fifties. Yeah. That was it right there. I, yeah, yeah. I I felt way behind in world eight as a result. I thought I gotta go for it here. I just gotta go completely nuts here and just do everything I can. To get to get back into this, so I just started making crazy uh, guesses with the pipes. I'm wondering if you did World A faster than me. Did he do World A faster than me? Uh, he did actually. He, he skipped all those pipe checks that you did and went straight to the uh, pipe that goes to the end. Sort of doing that gamble. Yeah, I just went. I just went. I I was basically like not even thinking at that point. Like I thought, I'm so far behind. I just got to go completely nuts here and hope I get and hope I get lucky. Uh, and all the eights tonight were pretty linear. Yeah. Yeah, that eight was linear for sure because it took a. There was one pipe at the start, and then it took us to the hand bridge, and that pipe took us on the other side of the hand bridge, which means that pipe took us to the black area. It was, there's nowhere else yeah. to go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. Well. I'm glad I got this far, so uh, I'll definitely take that. So, uh, but yeah, GG's Mitch, uh, congrats on third. GG Pro, thank you very much, and uh, thank you guys for for doing all this. And uh, what do we we have the finals tomorrow, don't we? Yep. Yeah. Hacksor, uh eight thirty Eastern. Uh, Hacksaw versus Teeks. Uh, myself and Dust Minion will be on the mic for uh, the best of five duel. Right on. That's sick. It'd be a good one for sure. Yeah, I'm excited. And what uh, what's the what's the prize pool at? Do you guys remember? Uh, it was four twenty five. I think half goes to first and twenty. If human mustards here, you can confirm. I think it's half goes to first and twenty five percent apiece to second and third. Cool. Right on. Yeah, I made so. some money. Woo! <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> All right. Well, if you guys want to add into the pot, right? Is there a link? Is there a link for uh, people if they want to uh, kind of uh, yeah. add into the pot? If you guys think, you know, who's going to win? Uh, uh, I I don't know if it's still open. I'll post the link. Uh, yeah. There you yeah, go. There oh, it's all right. I just, I just put... Yeah. I don't know if it's... 10 bucks in there. Yeah, I don't know if it's open or closed. Um, it might be closed at this point. Oh, it might uh, be closed. Yeah, I get oops, something went wrong. Yeah. All right. Well. Oh well. Well, well, we'll, have, we'll, we'll have more money uh, for SG Live in November. More that's money. right. So. All right. Well, thanks for, for having sure. me, guys. And um, yeah, thanks a lot. And uh, right. yeah, take it easy, guys. All right, GGs. All right, thanks and GGs. GGs guys. on for it again, Mitch. What an incredible matchup tonight. I had a ton of fun being here with you, Macobra. Thank you so much for being here alongside of me. That was a great time. Absolutely. Uh, always always a pleasure to call all these races. And, you know, uh, Philly really bounced back and forth there a lot. So that was great. Uh, got got some good uh, commentary in there. So, so yeah, as, as mentioned, uh, the finals is tomorrow. Um, I want to say 8.30. Is that correct? Yes, that's absolutely correct. If you're not already following Speed Gaming, I want to give them a shout out here real quick. Their team puts on 
just an absolutely stellar performance every single time we work with them. SG Live is always an amazing time. That's coming up in November. They're already starting to get the games and the pools ready for that. So if you want to donate, definitely look those up. That's a really great place to do it. Uh, all their restreamers, their tournament managers, our tournament managers do such a great job of providing you guys these really incredible races. So huge shout out to them, the entire SMB3 community. You guys are amazing. Absolutely. And yeah, with that, uh, we're going to wrap things up here uh, for tonight, ladies and gentlemen. But be sure you catch that finals match between THC and the Hacksaw tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. Eastern on this channel. So you do not want to miss it. it it'll be an exciting one for sure. Absolutely. Definitely follow Speed Gaming. That way you don't miss a thing. Follow the runners. Follow Macobra. He does a lot of SMB3 randomizer as well as basically anything SMB3, which is always entertaining. You don't want to miss that. But on behalf of Mitch Flower Power Pro A007, the entire SMB3 randomizer community, we want to say thank you so much for being here to join us with this third place match. I had a ton of fun. I think we definitely had a ton of fun. So until next time, chat, thank you so much for being here with us. A lot of places you could have been tonight, you're here with us. We appreciate you so much. And until next time, keep randomizing, keep racing, and take care. Have a good night, everybody.